So yeah, this is uh, game one of the Bust of 2011 series that you guys have sent in. Between two Korean players, I guess? No. Korean and a Chinese player? Yeah. Alright, so... Fairly normal openings. We have possibility of Orthodox or Mini Chinese Fuseki from Black, depending on what White chooses to do. White takes 3-4, not completely eliminating the possibility of a uh, Chinese variation, but makes it a lot more difficult. Black instead simply encloses for a bit of an Orthodox variation. Now we have our choice of what to do. We can split or we can approach. And those of you who attend my lectures regularly will know that one is a bit more common than the other nowadays. As Robert has already said. What? C9? Um... C9 would be very, very, very strange for black. And I will go over that in a second, I guess. Uh, splitting your opponent and are approaching the 4-4 uh, four, four stone, both carry the same idea. We do not want black to simply get... Okay, I'm going crazy with the marks here. Simply do not want black to get a nice extension from his enclosure to tie all of his stones on the right together, unless we can do something about it. Um... White could take the Chinese. You are allowing this to develop, though, if you decide to do that. We're essentially putting Chinese versus uh, Orthodox and seeing who's going to win. Interesting idea. I suppose you could play it. There is one downside to this. If you actually expand normally here, we're going to find uh, Black with a bit of a uh, double wing, which is very, very nice for him. But, white approaches, simply wants to split up the right-hand side, fairly standard. Black says, okay, given my very large enclosure, I'm going to pincer wide. That way, maybe I can develop it. As well as putting pressure on your stone. Fairly good idea. White has a couple of options. White could theoretically jump out, though it's a move we do not see very much. White could play extremely aggressively and actually try to invade this. Have multiple groups to uh, work with immediately, turn the entire right side into a gigantic fight. Not entirely unheard of, but possible. And then, of course, we have changing directions and going into the 3-3. All of these are... Well, I will say all of these are good options. A... A is unusual. A would be a little bit unusual here. We typically see everything but A a little bit more commonly, simply because, I mean, after you jump out, what are you going to do? The only thing you could possibly do is not this. That doesn't make sense. All I think you could possibly do is try and live locally. And even that has follow-ups. Not that either. I am misclicking all over the place today. So essentially from this variation, we're aiming to get this. Which doesn't really seem to be doing a lot from white, besides just living here. So, A is very special. A is very special. Instead, white simply taking the 3-3. Three, three. He wants territory. The influence, sure, we are giving our opponent a lot of influence by playing this way. But we cannot be afraid of little influence. After all, there's a lot of Aji left in that one stone. This one can still threaten A and B. This one stone can still threaten something at C, trying to hook up. Unless Black plays another move to take care of it, and if he does, then we get Sente. So, not too bad, not too bad. But Black says, forget all that. 
I'm playing for influence, and I'm going to... I'm playing for influence, playing very, very fast. Uh, I'm going to keep up with that and approach you high. High rather than low, again, because fourth line is influence, third line territory. So the rate, the way this game has gone so far has dictated how we're actually going to approach this. But what is White going to do? I mean, how many different options here do we have for him? I mean, he can attach on either side. We've got pincers. And this is where a lot of players start feeling a little bit overwhelmed as they start to learn just how many different options they have to choose from on something as simple as being approached. And to be fair, there's a lot of them. So we try and narrow it down. Like, what are we trying to do? One thing that you probably don't want to do, I think everyone will agree, is you don't want black to further enlarge that framework that he's got on the right-hand side. Would that be fair to say? Would everyone agree with that? Or would everyone disagree with that? Everyone is uncertain about that. That's fair too. You can invade everything. Okay. I like that. Um, your games are going to be very, very bloody. And most of that blood is probably going to be yours, Robert, if you actually uh, continue with the I can invade anything strategy. But, um, all right. Black keeps it simple. Or white keeps it simple, sorry. He sees what black is developing. He's like, you know what? I don't want you to further develop that. So I'm just going to play a little one-space extension here. We could do other things. We could attach it A, but maybe Black will choose to continue to develop this with a wall here. Could play this way, could play this way. We could go for pincers, but Black might still want to take a local loss in order to keep getting that influence. So it's hard to say how pincering is going to... Why is two space... Um, two space... Ah, here. Um, uh, this is an option. This is an option. Leaves a bit more... Uh, Aji behind, but I still see it as a fine move. I mean, there are obviously follow-ups uh, at here, for example. So, Black might choose to play very, very fast in light of that and see if he can't put all these together and try and get some sort of fast development here but I still see it as a fine move F4 also interesting you unless you're intending to expand later on you are inviting G3 or not G3, sorry, F3, or H3, whatever Blackstone currently occupies. Hello, Profan. So, white plays simply. Black says, well, I'm not going to play simple. Uh, I'm trying to develop very, very fast, so I'm going to approach you and see if I can't get a framework here as well. Again, many options here. Can answer, can pincer. Can go back and pincer the 3-4 uh, stone, whatever you want. White says, I made my stone stronger. You did not respond to it. So I'm going to attack. Um, the fourth line is just as special as the previous jump out that we referred to. We don't see it all that often. 
I mean, sometimes we see this, but under uh, very specific circumstances. Sometimes we see fourth line approach uh, from the 4-4, but again, under specific circumstances. Because if we actually see a variation like this, and consider endgame, I mention this quite a lot, but we're not actually getting very many points here. Unless we spend a Gote move at some point in the game, and seal that off. Whereas you can't really do similar to white. White's pretty much getting nice solid territory here. You... not really certain where your development's gonna come from. And if you want to make a framework, you're probably gonna back off high. So now you're undercut, and you've still got horrible endgame against you? I find this very, very difficult to use effectively, D14. So it's a bit of a special move. But good question, Calm. Um, here we go. Back to this. Now here Black actually does something a bit interesting. Because if we go for proverbs and things of that nature, we're probably not inclined to respond to white here. It's three against one. Usually we leave it and just uh, use Aji later. Because the stone's not going to completely die for black. Uh, it's severely injured. If white plays another move, it's still severely injured. But can't kill it just yet. So usually we leave it and uh, go elsewhere. But black actually decides to continue here. And before I do that, I notice I'm having questions. Um, if white ignore, I have no idea what that was. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. Uh, C14. Right. And B. Oh, and B plays F17 instead here. Okay. Um. All right, good question, good question. Well, you've got your options, obviously. A, B, C... Well, okay, you've got a few more options. I don't think D is really a good option here, so I'm going to just ignore that for the moment. Um, e, 15, what? Oh, you're... Yeah, okay, I see what you're saying. I would probably uh, play something like this and just play normal Jiseki or maybe even leave it for later. It's really, really easy to handle. Hard to get yourself into a bad situation. If you don't know Jiseki, you might be less inclined to uh, attach. Uh, so, let's see... Where was I? Right, here. Black actually plays three on one and decides to attach, trying to use Aji. More importantly, trying to keep these separated. White responded. So Black extends. Why does black possibly extend? Well, we can see what he's trying to do. If white, for example, plays anywhere else, let's say, um, doesn't follow up with any kind of attack, but maybe protects his corner, then suddenly this is going to come back alive, and black's going to be very, very happy, because he's able to get uh, stronger here. He can go ahead and come out however he chooses to attack c7 from a nice strong position on the left-hand side. So can't respond to that. Can't respond to that. 
we have to follow up our attack against these two uh, against these two stones, which is exactly what white does. Now, it would be a little bit insane to try to run this stone out, because you will make the every stone, a white stone of your opponents, uh, very, very strong as you're pushing yourself against them in order to escape. That's only going to hurt the outside. So black except, uh, plays at f17. He's somewhat happy with his position. He made the left hand uh, stronger. White is heavily invested in two corners, pretty much where his territory is coming from right now. Black still has his framework, and he now has a double approach on a 4-4 stone. So he's doing fairly well here. But now, how do we respond? And this is kind of why I didn't really go into um, your question when you mentioned uh, F17 earlier, because we were actually seeing it in the game. How do you think we should respond here? Should we be attaching? Should we play uh, E15? How do we respond? How do we know how we want to respond? What do you think? How do we figure out which of these three moves is good? How do we know? Okay, this, we need to know more than just, you know, play here because I said so. We need to know how we're coming to that decision. Alright, C17 might be alright here. Um... I don't know, with D10, I'm not entirely certain I like that. Alright, we have other uh, recommendations here. Alright, Robert T. said, what's weak? That is very, very true. So let's look for weaknesses. Uh, we have a weak point here, which could be interesting to exploit at A, but we need to make ourselves stronger before we're going to do that. If we just slap a stone down there right now, we're going to be in a lot of trouble, and we completely deserve being in trouble. Because we're essentially playing elsewhere when our entire corner is threatened with being surrounded. So, do not like that. Um, what else do we see here? F16 was mentioned to attack C14. Okay, now we're coming up with a plan. We're seeing the weakness at A. He says that we should get rid of all of these marks so it's easier to look at. He's saying that we see the weakness at A. So I'm going to attach in order to get stronger to attack A. Now that is a plan. You see a weakness. You've determined how you're going to get stronger without actively, you know, making whatever you're trying to attack stronger. This is a good idea. This is a good idea. And White fully agrees with you. Meaning we could attach on the other side, but Black is perfectly fine here. Nice little base. If we do anything else... I mean, how are we going to respond? If we play here, he's got a base, he might choose to cut us. Threaten, probably more likely. He's already got uh, his base there, so the question is, can we use these four stones of white to attack F17? Clearly not, it's already defending itself. So, not good. So, we attach here instead. Black's going to go ahead and Hane. White responds, obviously. Black push. White sides to block. And black immediately attacks. So again, he realizes that, yes, there is a weakness at C12 and I'm going to defend it by putting more pressure on you. However, the only threat here is with potential uh, push and cuts. So white defends with a forcing move, 
and attacks the group that black has yet to defend, which is the top. Oh, someone's mentioned the cut? Yeah, doesn't quite work yet. You can see it goes nowhere. It gives us a lot of forcing moves, which in and of itself, in some games, is really, really cool. Because we've got, you know, uh, Atari, we've got semi-Atari, we've got more Atari. A lot of forcing moves for black to, uh, force black to capture. If these stones on the left weren't there, this would be some pretty nice thickness, especially since we can easily expand from it as well. This would be a fairly good situation for uh, white. But not quite there yet. Black is much too strong on this board. Can't play this way. So we pincer it instead. Make it hard to settle. Black comes out. White says I'm going to chase you. However, there is more going on. Sorry. Open G17. Right. Opens E16. Okay. Uh, there's more going on here with this last stone, by the way, than you might see at first glance. You always have to be aware of things like this. This group is under attack, sure, that much is a given, but you also have to keep in mind that as white gets stronger out in the center, this stone over on the right gets more aji, because we can actually run, we can actually run somewhere. We're not just, uh, take away these stones, let's say right now. Uh, invade, whoa, I'm getting rid of the board now, I, uh, tell you what, let's go back and do that before I mess up the tree. Let's take away these stones and now run. We have absolutely no idea where we're going now. We're just kind of running off into the middle. We're, you know, hoping we can connect somewhere. Don't really know how this group is going to get settled. Yeah, I, I killed the tree. I'm sorry. I think I did. But can't do anything about that now. We have to uh, live, so it jumps out. Yep, tree's dead. White, not wanting to be surrounded, also comes out. As you would expect. Black attaches. A bit of a curious move here. Why does black attach? Hint, we've already gone over the reason once in this game. Mm. You're close, killer. Why didn't we, for example, simply jump out again? Indeed. Similar to White's attachment here. He's identified what he wants to attack. He knows that the group, uh, White's group, in the, at the uh, corner, not quite alright yet. So instead of just getting into this jumping war where everyone's safe and there's nothing interesting happening at all, Black says, okay, forget that. I'm going to attach to your stone. Yeah, I'm going to make you stronger. But if you're not careful, I'm going to be able to surround you because you've made me stronger. And now you're going to have to live in the corner. Good luck with that. Also, any center influence will also work with the uh, uh, bottom framework, which is also nice. So, white responds once, and then says, you know what, I know exactly what you're doing, I'm out of here. He's not going to let himself get surrounded. Forget all that. He knows he's weak, he can't keep responding there, he's going to save what's important, which is his corner group right now. Black, on the other hand, now has to profit from uh, his attachment. And lo and behold, there is a cut point that our opponent did not protect. So where are we going to play? We're going to cut. Because this has to live, and this has to live. Which is a fairly good position for Black. I mean, think about this. He's either attacking the top stones, if he kills them, awesome. 
or he's going to get stronger in the middle, which is exactly where his framework is, on the right-hand side. He's going to get influence facing that side, which is also good. So Black should be feeling pretty happy with himself at this point. I would be tempted to cry here as well, yeah. White tries to defend by putting pressure on uh, the Aji at R14. But is not going to get caught up in that. He realizes what's valuable here. The top stones, they're not defended. O16 is not a defense for J16. Nor was his cutting stone hurt in any way from that. So he's going to keep attacking. White says, okay, I'll come up then. Black says, fine, thank you for your stones. They were very nummy. Because at this point, it's highly unlikely those stones are getting light anytime today. But there is a bit of an exchange here because black took the stones. White gets to attack the right hand side. Strengthening himself. He's got a small knight here. He knows it's weak. It's going to strengthen his shape. So now this group is nice and strong. Regardless of whatever the whatever Aji is left with uh, these three stones, it's fairly safe to say that there's not enough Aji remaining for them to come back to life. I mean, the small knight's protected, can't really do anything about uh, attaching under at M18, that's gone as well. Black's all uh, nice and strong there. In exchange, R15 probably dead. Probably dead. There's Aju there for Black still. I mean, we've got forcing moves in the area, right? To kill it off. If this gets too strong, though, we might be have a, might have a solid connection. That would be nice too. Um, who's ahead? It kind of depends on what we're doing with Sente. Small moves are going to really hurt us. Because this bottom left hand corner is fairly nice for white. Upper left upper right, also fairly nice for white. What do we have? We've got an enclosure which is nice. It's strong, don't don't get me wrong. But it's a large one, so we can't count this as territory just yet. It can be invaded, so we have to be careful. Yes, this is a professional game between a Chinese uh, professional, which is black player, and a Korean, who is a white player. Uh, for black, we also have some nice territory on the right hand, our left-hand side, though. However, we do also have stones that have not been taken off the board yet, which are these. Hello, thank you. And these. Now, not really certain how we can connect up the top right stones, or make life for them. But here we have something. We can force white to kill them off. Just picture that for a moment. White going ahead, and allowing black to get a wall here, because he wants to keep those stones dead. That would work very, very well with black stones on the right-hand side. So white can't simply rep respond passively. He has to be aggressive here. Because if he allows this to take place, something similar, then white or black's going to get very, very happy because he's getting a lot of strength here. In exchange for stones which we already considered dead. Uh, what about D9? Let's go away with that. What's D9? D9, D9, D9. Um, uh, D9, it looks like you're strengthening white, but what is your goal there? I mean, are you going to try and pincer or some, Or not pincer, are you going to try to cut something?
You're going to use Aji in a corner and strengthen white in the middle. Hmm. That seems a bit far-fetched. And there's no way you're killing C7. Uh, did I already play? Yes, I did. Because with D9, I see what you're threatening to do here. But the question becomes, how are you actually going to try to accomplish that? If, for example, something like this is played, your object, your objective, I guess, is to try to cut through here and say, mission accomplished, I suppose. A um, couple things with that. One, I like the influence that white just obtained and is now able to expand over the board. So even if this variation was in fact played, I still like it for white. But I don't think white has to be that passive. I think white can probably play a little bit lighter here, so it doesn't have to actually run you into that variation and still get influence at the same time. So it's very risky. You're strengthening white, and the payoff is really, really hard to see. Instead, here, it's very easy to see. Either I'm getting out, or I'm getting strength here. You pick which one's going to happen. So white plays aggressively. Black now knows he has this in order to connect up. And then he launches into something more complicated than I would have envisioned. He knows he can separate these stones. He knows there's weaknesses with this group still. It's not quite alive. Its safety resides in the fact that it's all connected up to the bottom. So he actually tries to make difficulty here. Something that's very, very difficult to see. He's trying to uh, go under. He's trying to split that connection. He's trying to do many different things at once. White realizes, no, I, I really, really can't lose the connection here. This is not good. So he defends. Nothing you can do about it. If we block again, black's just going to come on in. So we Atari, then connect, and then separates. If white was fine in the upper left, this wouldn't be a very good variation. But since white is in trouble, we've got a problem on our hands, because this needs to still needs to live. And this is not uh, that much better off either, considering that happy move lingering at f5 to split us. Why didn't white play e9, 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 e9? Um, here? Instead of b8, okay, um, sorry. Instead of b8. Instead of that. Okay, I see, here. Uh, he did not want to allow this. I would imagine. So, black peeks out. White has two problems on his hand. White deals with one, says, okay, you are never, ever, ever going to bring that group out. Because if that group comes out, now I'm in a lot more trouble. Now I've got these uh, five stones here. They've got to run. But if they run, the top, the bottom is going to get damaged and everything is just falling to pieces. Mm -hmm. So he protects that. So black immediately goes after white's shape. Very, very aggressive fight here. 
Black has to figure out how he's going to save everything. Or White has to figure out how he's going to save everything, sorry. White tries to capture. Black saves. And saves. And saves. That right there is nice profit. In exchange for stones that were already dead, it looks like we just killed off three stones. That's fairly nice. White then escapes. So the question is, is that something we really have to respond to? Because it looks like these stones are dead regardless of what uh, White's next move is. So these stones are fine. This can't push out because they immediately get uh, captured if White tries to cut. So this is still fine. Which means we killed stones in Sente because this doesn't have to be responded to. Black could Atari G14? Is there an Atari on the board? Um, G14... Yes, 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 yes. If we push and cut, Black's just going to take the two stones, is if that, that's what you're saying. So yeah, we have Senta here as Black, which is fairly good. In exchange for one more stone, we force White to kill off the stones that were already dead. We got a few more stones for our trouble, and we have Sente out of it. White is now very, very happy. Or black is very happy, sorry. I always get confused, because I'm both people at once. My brain cannot keep up. And as far as I know, I'm like the only person who actually reviews that keeps getting messed up at that. My brain is just not wired right for Go. Well, usually in the reviews that I see... Anyway. So Black Essente says, all right, I'm going to sacrifice this and uh, see where that leads. Because I don't think White wants to let these stones come back to life either. So hooray, free move. Poke at the shape again. Force White to run away. Everything's nicely captured now. Sente for Black. He takes a large point. At this point, I really like Black. Hmm. Well, that's good. I'm not the only one. Huzzah. But yes, at this point, the board looks fairly nice for Black. He's got the left-hand side, he captured some stones, top's fairly large, this right is expanding. Everything is going about rather well. White does have a bit of uh, influence now because of this, though. So he decides to be as greedy as possible and expand as far as he can. Try and make that bottom left-hand side enormous. Maybe we can even develop some of the center. Who knows? Plus, this near stone is also the first one that we need when we think about how to try and live back here. If we're going to have any Aji, we need nearby stones. So he's being as aggressive and as greedy as he can at the same time. But, again, it looks like Black's in a very good position. So he's simply going to strengthen himself. Say, you know what? You can have that territory if you want. I'm going to make sure that you can't invade my corner. I'm going to make sure that uh, I'm keeping the territory that's pretty much sketched out for me on the right-hand side. I'll be happy with all of this. White secures his bottom side. Because if we play elsewhere, again, keep in mind, we just saw this variation. There is Aji here. We may not play this, we might, I don't know, play here instead this time. 
or maybe we'll try capping here and then coming in or something. But either way, this needs defense. So he defends. These are very confident moves. Black knows the score. He's comfortable with his position. He's not going to try anything crazy. He's going to play nice and solid, keep his points. Let white be the crazy one. And sure enough, there's no weak groups on the board right now, besides potentially white, and we cannot spend another point. We cannot spend another point in uh, defending it. So what's white going to do? Expanding up simply like at uh, K6 is kind of slow. No weak groups to harass. Guess we're going to try and invade. So he attaches. It's a probe. We simply want to know how are you going to respond to our moves, Black? Are you going to give us Aji? Are you going to play elsewhere? What are you going to do? Black says, forget it. You can't live here. I'm going to run nice and strong. No going, no going under my stones. No escaping. No doing anything. You are mine. And this is very confident. Because if white manages to live here, that's huge. Yes, white heard you when you said he can invade everywhere. Let's see how that turns out. So white is a pro. He's going to try and create some Anji here as soon as KJS stops lagging. There we go. Black's not going to let it connect. White tries. Black defends himself. Denied access to the side or the corner. Yup. That's exactly what this is. White needs something here, because this is becoming too much. So he defends himself. A lot of forcing moves, to be sure. A lot of forcing moves. But where are we getting our two eyes from? Well, it's more right now than about two eyes. Right now he wants to cut and maybe threaten to connect, or if we can cut off those uh, four black stones, kill them off, that'd be nice too. So black says, forget that. I'm not allowing that to happen ever. No cutting and killing me. I don't like that at all. So white says, fine, now I'll connect. I get the clamp here. Clamp works. But it doesn't. So black, so uh, white resigns. Really fun move here, though. Because if we respond to this, we cannot possibly cut. We cannot connect this up. This would be horrible. Guess who's back alive? Can't allow that to happen. So I guess if we respond here, what are we going to do? We have to not play that, I guess. So gets to connect. Try and take our eye. That's not going to work. Try and do this. Again, same thing, not going to work. Can only get the one eye. So white's clearly dead and has to resign. Very interesting game. Bit of a fighting game, but it's a game that I have to say I would have picked. Because I like how simple black made this.
So this is something along the lines that I probably would have picked for uh, one of my own lectures, because I really like uh, some of Black's play here. Nice, very simple style that we can all follow along with. Did anyone have any questions about this game? That can happen, USF, and you definitely don't want to lose faith in that. Sometimes, yeah. What was the last sequence White was looking for in that clamp? Um, I'm not really certain what he was looking for, to be honest. Maybe he thought Black would play here, so he would get to force some sort of... I don't know. I have absolutely no idea what he was looking for. Because nothing really... this, I guess? Maybe he was looking for this? He thought he could live, uh, and let live, maybe, I guess? But yeah, Black found a way not to let that happen. <laughs> yeah. Probably. Uh, but alright, this game dragged on a little bit longer than I thought. So we'll have our next game tomorrow, which is going to be entirely different than uh, what we just saw. I don't have enough time to do the uh, next game right now. I've got another... Uh... Well, actually, do I or don't I? I don't know if I have another lesson or not. <laughs>